look myself in the mirror and accept that if you weren't a racist, you condone what a racist did. So that's to me the same thing. It's the same thing. So I, I agree with you completely. Sounds to really make you rub and scrub. Swing barang barang bong billy billy bong. Bong billy 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 bong. I said, pass the dutchy from the left hand side. Pass the dutchy from the left hand side. It's a go bon. Anthony, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. You, you uh, got a big show, you got a big following. So uh, God bless you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Both of you, welcome to the show. I greatly appreciate you coming on. Thank you, thank you, and good morning. The right, floor is yours. Good job. Whatever it is, it'll keep till the morning. How about we both got better things to do? Midnight blue Time on your side I still care I may have died But I come nowhere Just think of me I'll be there Just think of me I'll be there There you go Bit rusty <laughs> you know what? I gotta, I gotta tell you. Usually, I make my guests get a little emotional if I find something that touches them. You got me this time. So, viewers, you're always telling me you got this one emotional. That got me emotional. I don't my eyes. Since you told me you've seen some of the shows already, welcome, Johnny. Of course, you know the running joke on my show is because you're six hours ahead of me. Oh yeah. I need the lottery numbers. But what do you mean? These ones. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you, man. Hey, folks, the man with the pinky ring and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood, and you're watching another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Now hit that button in that corner or that corner, whatever corner it's in, forget about it and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Leave your comments below. Let's have a conversation. Well, again, today, folks, this is the Bad Brad Berkwood Show, but we're doing a special edition. I took followers and viewers questions, which I said I would do. I'm a little bit behind. I was trying to get this done this weekend, but I wasn't able to with some interviews and, and last stop the Twilight Zone show that I do with Gore Depp. But I'm getting to it today, Monday afternoon. So... Reminder, follow me on Twitter, at BadBradRSR. Again, that's at BadBradRSR. If you want to have your question answered, send them in to ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Make sure you put your name, first and last name, city, state, or country. I'll never read your last name on my show, it'll just be the initials. But if you put a fake, uh, you know, just a handle or something, I'm not gonna answer it, I, I need a name. I've always done it on all of my interview shows or, or questions and answers uh, for the boxing. So that's the one rule that I have to enforce. All right, folks, so hey, these are some really good questions. Let's get into them today, forget about it. First question, Bad Brad, love your shows and the pull no punches way you do them all. I wanted to know something about your show closing. You always say, bad Brad out. Where does that come from? Pete J from Albany, New York. Well, Pete J, thank you for your question. I appreciate you sending it in. Let me explain to you, because I have been asked this before. Why do I always end the shows with bad Brad out? Okay, here's the secret. You ready? When I was in the military, I worked in intelligence for 16 and a half of my 20 years, 20 years and 28 days in the Navy, and then another six years after as a government contractor. And whenever we talked on a Stu 3 phone, some of you may know what that is. We would, when, before we hang out, we would say, out, meaning to tell the person that we were hanging up because sometimes people would get in trouble. What they would do is they'd keep a secure line open 
and you can hear the conversation. You're not supposed to do that. Okay. So that's where the bad Brad out comes from my military days. It's kind of like a, an homage to uh, my career in the Navy, 20 years and 28 days in intelligence field. I was a cryptological technician, administrative. I handled security clearances and a lot of other things. Some stuff I could talk about, some things I can't. That's what I did. All right, so uh, PJ, thank you again for all New York. Next question. Bad Brad, I watched your show with Stella Pardon. And halfway through it, I was in love with both of you for the calling out the BS with Trump and other things. We need more folks like the two of you. Santino, hush. See what happens when you got you got your little Havanese here, you want to be part of the show. Santino, hush. We start again. I watched your show with Stella Part, and halfway through it, I was in love with both of you for calling out the BS with Trump and other things. We need more folks like the two of you in this world and less of the trumpets. How often do you shoot your show? Because I cannot get enough of it now that I found you and subscribe. Lindy A from Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, from Memphis. Forget about some great music out of uh, Nashville, Memphis, that area. Well, I'm trying to shoot uh, Lindy as much content as I can per day. I've got the Bad Rap Work with Show, which is my interview show, and special shows like this and book reviews. I do on that. I've got Bad Brad's Thoughts, where whatever comes into my head, I put it out. I've got Last Stop, the Twilight Zone show with my uh, fellow host, Gord Depp of the Spoons. And I got some other things here and there that I do, boxing, excuse me, boxing related and stuff like that. So Santino, stop. So check it out. I have many different playlists. Thank you for subscribing. Anybody else that subscribed, I greatly appreciate you too. Next question, BB. I follow all of your tweets and shows and your team on Ringside Report. How the hell do you keep up with all of it, buddy? Saw the other day you're being inducted into the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame in June. What an honor and congrats. My dad loved boxing and Muhammad Ali. Oh, what a great one. Who is your favorite boxer of all time? Paul T. from Newark, New Jersey. Oh, Newark, New Jersey in the house. He used to go to Newark, pal. Well, welcome, Paul T. to the show. My favorite boxer, I can say it right off the top of my head, there's no... If ands or buts, I'm going to go like this for the viewers that may or may not know. He used to do this when he would come out in the corner before they announced him. He would put his hand up. He'd go like this, actually. And the answer is Aaron the Hawk Pryor. He was the WBA and IBF Junior Walter Rate Champion of the world. He beat Antonio Cervantes in 1980. He had two great fights with my number two fighter of all time, Alexis Arguello. My favorite fight of all time against Arguello was the first one, November 1982 in the Orange Bowl. And he stopped Arguello, and then he had a rematch in 83, and he stopped him earlier. But Aaron Hawk Pryor, sadly, he passed away a couple of years ago. And on my wall, on the opposite side of my monitor, I've got some pictures of Aaron and I, and uh, he was a great guy. God rest his soul, and God rest Alexis Arguello's soul, too. Two great fighters. Floyd Mayweather couldn't hang with Aaron Pryor on his best day, okay? On his, on his best day. Forget about it. All right, that's your answer, Paul. Next question. Bad Brad, I've heard you do shows where you talked about being in an interracial relationship. I am in love with a black girl, but, parent, but my parents are so racist, it's not even funny. I do love them, but I love my girlfriend too. What should I do because I'm scared if I do or say nothing, I will lose her. Richard A. from Mobile, Alabama. Oh, that's a deep question. And a good one. Well, Richard A., thank you for sending your question in from Mobile, Alabama. Let me say this. Yes, I am in an interracial relationship. And I've been in many over the years, since 1987 to present day, including a wife or maybe two. Forget about it. But seriously, first of all, Alabama, double forget about it. Here's the deal. As straight up as I can tell you, you love who you love, people. And Richard, that's you as well. I don't care if you're you're gay, if you're straight, if you're white or you're black, or whatever the mix is. You love who you love because God created all of us. So who has the right to tell you who to love? Now, I know it's a tough situation because your parents are racist. And here's the thing. At their age, most times people are not going to change. They have what they have in their heart. And I, I'm going to make an assumption that Alabama, they're probably Christians, and we know how that goes, the hypocrisy of religion. 
I don't want to bash your parents because you love them. But step back. You love your girlfriend too. So what I would do is I'd have a sit down with your girlfriend there and talk to your parents and tell them how it's going to be. Not them telling you how it's going to be because I'm assuming you're over the age of 18. So if from that point they don't want to be part of your life, I hate to say it, but you know that old saying, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. You may still love them, but you don't have to tolerate it. Nobody has to tolerate any crap. But if you do, then what they bring to you, you accept. But you love who you love. I never stopped. I had people along the lines that didn't like it. I had people in the military I worked for. I had a, a racist commander one time in 1988. Told me when my, my first wife, my ex-wife, told me, next time you get married, why don't you not marry a black girl? And I told him, sir, with all due respect, because he was much senior to me, I was only an E3 at the time, I said, you never tell me what to do in my personal life or who to marry. And he didn't say another word because he knew he was crossing the line. Even back then, I wasn't going to tolerate it. I won't tolerate it to this day. But again, um, Richard, you love who you love. Sit down with your parents. Do it now. Do it for your girlfriend's sake. Because if she doesn't want to stay with you, that's one thing. But if she wants to and you both love each other, you must sit down with your parents now and you tell them how it's going to be, not the other way around. Because if you stay with her and you eventually have kids, they're going to be grandparents. If they want to be ugly towards your child or you, you don't want that in your life, even if you still love them. All right? So that's my straight answer on that. Last question. Bad Brad, it's so tough being black in America. Amen. I, I, I'm not saying I am black, but I know that it is tough for black people in America, and I speak out on it daily. I'm disgusted about it. They go on to say, about six months ago, I started following you on Twitter. Your tweets moved me to tears. I know, as you say, you pull no punches. See, people are starting to pick up on my catchphrase, but it's true, I do. I don't pull punches. Can it change for me? Signed, Shanna T. Shanna, S-H-A-N-A, T, Detroit, Michigan. Well, Shanna, that's a fantastic question. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Thank you for sending in your questions. Before I answer it, I love Detroit. I grew up on and off um, from 79 to 84 with my Italian Nona in Pontiac, Michigan, which you might have heard me say um, to, to somebody, I can't, oh, it was, um, who was I talking to? Oh, Mike Skill from Romantics about um, Detroit has been decimated. It's just, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, Pontiac has been decimated. It's just, it's just sad. Can it change? I'm a realist. I actually put this out on Twitter today, believe it or not. And I had this question before. I, didn't, I just saw the questions. So somehow we're, we're connecting today as well. It can change, but it's going to change in increments. And you have to, not you, people, white and black and other, have to come together because in many, strength comes. In single, small numbers, it's not going to happen. But I'm a realist. America is never going to completely change, but we can get better. We're capable of doing better. But you know something? If I were to send a message out, to people that look like me that are poor, and if they're if you're African American and you're poor, what better common ground can you find than raising each other up out of abject poverty? But here's the difference, and this is the truth that I, that I find a lot of times. Poor white people, for some reason, I'm not saying all, because I don't paint in broad strokes, will look down on other poor people, especially people of color. But poor black people, don't do that. Now, one thing that does happen, there is rifts within black people. I see that a lot. If, if somebody's light-skinned and somebody's darker complected, that bullshit that's going on for far too long, I hate that. But the thing that I will say, black people don't look down on poor white people. So you have that commonality right there. Raise each other up. I also like to see Native Americans come together with people that have been down, downtrodden, whether they're poor white, whether they're black, Come together because again, one fight, many voices. So it can change, but it's going to take many, many people to make those changes. And just talking about it is not enough. You have to get out there. You have to hit up your your elected officials. You have to hold their feet to the fire. Okay, 
you have to march peacefully. I've never been for looting and violence. I also um, have said, go to your congressional offices peacefully. Don't be like these idiots with the guns. They're stupid. That Trump said are patriots. They're not fucking patriots. I had to throw an F word in there. They're not patriots. Do it peacefully. Your voice matters. But like I said, I'm also a realist. It's never going to change completely because we always say America, but see, really, every state in the United States, all 50 of them, have beauty within them. It's not this, it's not, we say America, but really, it's the people in America. It's not the land, it's not the city, it's the people. So, in increments, we will see change, but we gotta keep fighting and we gotta keep speaking out. And people that look like me, doggone it, come together. If you have empathy and compassion and care about humanity, reach out to somebody. Black people, reach out to white people. Not all white people are devils. That's not, I, mean, I hear some black people say that's not true. There are devils within white people. There's devils within black people. There's devils within all people. But you got to come together. I'm not a person, again, that paints in broad strokes. So I'm glad that you follow me, um, Shana. I'm glad that you sent your question in because it's an honest question and it needs to be answered. And it needs to be answered by more people than just me. But I'm going to say something to people, again, that look like me. Use your voice because black people's voices are important, absolutely. But we live in a society where I don't like it, but it's the truth that people that look like me are heard more than black people. And it's wrong and I don't agree with it and I want it to change. But the reality is use your voice because I've used my voice many times and be able to do some things that black people can't do. And I don't like it. I don't agree with it. But you know what? It's called white privilege. And I don't deny it. Though I know people that are in interracial relationships that say, oh, I would like to give me some white privilege. Really? You think that you don't have white privilege by the simple complexion of your skin, how you were born? You absolutely do. But what you do with it is the most important thing. I choose to use it for the positive. Because again, I believe in God. I want that to be out there. Not a Bible thumper. I don't care for any organized religion for the most part. The hypocrisy in religion is disgusting to me. I probably will never step church in a, never step church, never step foot in a church again. But I know what my platform, what my complexion allows me to do. And I have to look myself in the mirror, hold it up like Morris Day in a time. Remember he used to say, what time is it? And you look in the mirror, look in the mirror. Do what you feel you're comfortable with doing to make humanity better. All right, that's the answer to the question. Yes, we're going to get better in increments, but it will never be perfect. That's unrealistic. But it's going to take all of us to come together. And the people that don't want to come together are racist. The 74.2 million that are racist. I'm not going to say all Trump supporters. I used to say that, but then I met some that don't really care for. But believe it or not, they weren't racist. It was other their the policies and this, but I don't agree with them. But if they don't want to change their ways and come on board, because people can change. People can change. If you want to see a perfect example, I watched the movie, I can't think of the name of it, but Taraji Hansen, leave the name of the movie down here. Sam Rockwell was in the Klan and Taraji Hansen was a civil rights activist in the South. I want to say it was in Mississippi, but I could be wrong. Watch that movie, great, great movie. He changed and they became friends and they spoke out and they made a difference. Okay? One fight, many voices. All right, folks, that's the first of many that I'll do when I'm taking uh, viewers and Follow his questions on the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Again, follow me on Twitter, at Bad Brad at RSR. Again, at Bad Brad at RSR. If you want your question answered, send in your name. First, last, city, state, and country. I'll only say the last initial. Send them into ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. All right, that's another Bad Brad Berkwood Show in the can. Forget about it. And remember, folks, every act of kindness is a little love we leave behind. Bad Brad out.